Hi friends, I am Mahanif. The today topic is typhoid fever. So I am going to tell you about the typhoid. First, what is typhoid? Typhoid is an infectious disease caused by Salmonella typhi bacteria. Actually, typhoid fever is rare in industrialized countries. However, it remains a serious health threat in the developing world, especially for children. Vaccines against typhoid fever are available, but they are only partially effective. Vaccines usually are reserved for those who may be exposed to the disease or are traveling to areas where typhoid fever is common. Symptoms Although children with typhoid fever sometimes become sick suddenly, signs and symptoms are more likely to develop gradually, often appearing one to three weeks after exposure to the disease. First week of illness. Once signs and symptoms do appear, you are likely to experience fever that starts low and increases daily, often to as high as 103 or 104 degree fever. Headache, weakness and fatigue, dry cough, loss of appetite, abdominal pain, diarrhea or constipation and rash. And in second week of illness, if someone don't receive treatment for typhoid fever, they may enter a second stage during which you become very ill and experience continuing high fever, either diarrhea or severe constipation, considerable weight loss, extremely distended abdomen, and in third week of illness, by the third week, you may become delirious, lie motionless, and exhausted with your eyes half closed in what's known as the typhoid state. Life threatening complications often develop at this time. Fourth week of illness. Improvement may come slowly during the fourth week. Your fever is likely to decrease gradually until your temperature returns to normal. In another week to 10 days, but signs and symptoms can return up to two weeks after your fever has subsided. Causes Typhoid fever is caused by a virulent bacterium called Salmonella typhi, although they are related as typhi and the bacterium responsible for salmonellosis. Another serious intestinal infection are not the same. It can spread person to person by fecal oral transmission route. The bacteria that cause typhoid fever spread through contaminated food or water and occasionally through direct contact with someone who is infected. In developing nations where typhoid is endemic, most cases result from contaminated drinking water and poor sanitation. Majority of people in industrialized countries pick up the typhoid bacteria while traveling and spread it to others through the fecal oral route. This means that as typhi is passed in the feces and sometimes in the urine of infected people. You can contract the infection if you eat food handled by someone with typhoid fever who has not washed carefully after using the toilet. You can also become infected by drinking water contaminated with the bacteria. Typhoid carriers. Even after treatment with antibiotics, a small number of people who recover from typhoid fever continue to harbor the bacteria in their internal tracts or gallbladders, often for years. These people, called chronic carriers, shed the bacteria in their feces and are capable of infecting others. Although they no longer have signs and symptoms of the disease themselves. Complications Intestinal bleeding or hole, the most serious complication of typhoid fever. Intestinal bleeding or hole perforations may develop in the third week of illness. About 5% of people with typhoid fever experience this complication. Intestinal bleeding Intestinal bleeding is often marked by a sudden drop in blood pressure and shock, followed by the appearance of blood in your stool. A perforated intestine occurs when your small intestine or large bowel develops a hole causing intestinal contents to leak into your abdominal cavity and triggering signs and symptoms such as severe abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, and bloodstream infection, sepsis. This life-threatening emergency requires immediate medical care. Treatments Antibiotic treatment is the only effective treatment for typhoid fever. Most common prescribed antibiotics are the ciprofloxacin and ceftriaxone for typhoid patients. Doctors often prescribe ciprofloxacin for non-pregnant adverse and the ceftriaxone, this injectable antibiotic is an alternative for women who are pregnant and for children who may be not candidates for ciprofloxacin. These drugs can cause side effects and long-term use can lead to the development of antibiotic resistance of bacteria. Problem with 
antibiotic resistance. The past, the drug of choice was chloramphenicol. Doctors no longer commonly use it. However, because of side effects, a high rate of health deterioration. After a period of improvement and widespread bacterial effect, the existence of antibiotic bacteria is a growing problem in the treatment of typhoid, especially in the developing world. In recent years, the Salmonella typhi also was proved resistant to sulfamethoprim, sulfamethoxazole, and acetylene to be happy and healthy.